guys, JB Salee from Dallas, Texas here. I just got back yesterday from my workshop in France with uh, 12 amazing photographers. We had a really good time. This was shot on the first night after a long day of shooting and Photoshop and wine drinking. We had some fun with the owners of this castle. This is the Duke and his fiance. And they said, hey, JB, can you make a masterpiece of us so that we can hang in our house, our castle. I say, yep. When the Duke asks for a masterpiece, you say yes. So let's go through and look at the images. <clears throat> this is the image that I selected of them. I shot about 20 of them and I like their expressions the most here. Uh, kicker light back here and the main lights over here on the snoot. So we've got one main light at 45 degrees off camera to the left, Profoto B1X. And then off camera, 135 degrees 135 degrees to the right is a B10 with also a snoot on there. And the reason why we're using snoots is to control and pinpoint and shape the light so it only hits on the subject and it doesn't fall off too much on the backdrop. You'll see the light from this main light hits over here a bit. So the very last shot that I do, I pull all the, all the lights out and see if I can find it. And I light up just the scene, which is right here. So now I have this area that I can fix and also the fireplace if I want to enhance the fire just a bit, I can do that as well. So let's go through and look at all the images. Here's the shot of them. And then here's the next shot. I put this on a tripod so it's easier to manage in Photoshop. You can see we're lighting up this portrait with a snoot. Then also I noticed I got a nice little reflection. That's a little bonus I didn't realize. And the next shot, we're going for this portrait. Nice reflection in the glass. And then we hit this guy. Missed the reflection, but I think I can manage that in Photoshop and take this, duplicate it, flip it, put it in there, make it look like a reflection to fix it. And then the fourth portrait up here, beautiful reflection as well. And then there's the scene without any strobes or people. So I have backup just in case I need a certain element to work with. And then we have this, put a B1X down here on with the grid just to light up the window just a bit. So little blue pops. And I did the other side. Boom, right there. So I'll take that, drop it into the shot. Then I put the B1X right here with the grid to light this up just a bit. Show off that really beautiful detail in the marble. Same over here. And then last shot, I believe, I'm holding the B1X just to light up the ceiling because it's a really pretty blue. And I'll take this and also in the reflection and add that in just a bit. And then one last shot, underexpose. If I do want to bring back the candle flames, I can do so with perfection. All right, so let's take these images in. And just select them all. Right click, edit in Photoshop. and we'll get to work. If you have any questions while I'm working on this, feel free to leave a comment below in this YouTube video and I will do my best to reply back to you. So five days in France, we did uh, two and a half days of workshop with a little bonus day shoot at the Eiffel Tower in Paris on the last day. If you guys are interested, I'm hosting the same workshop in 2020, March 5th through March 13th. It's $1,500 per person, includes a lobster dinner one night and breakfast three in the mornings and also lunch for two of the workshop days. So not only am I gonna educate you with my lighting skills and my Photoshop skills, but I'm also gonna impress you with my culinary skills or at least try to. All right, all these files are opening up. And they're looking good. Also, I'm going on a 26 city tour in 2019, uh, 25 cities within the US. If you're interested about that, please go to our website, salephotography.com and click on 2019 tour. It's salee, S-A-L-L-E, photography.com.
I'm coming to a city near you for four hours for $39 or two full days of a shooting day with models up to 15 attendees for $399. It's the lowest amount I've ever charged for a two-day workshop. We have full sponsorship for this thing, so I could charge a lot less. Normally it goes for $950 for two days. So you're saving about 60%. Not too shabby. And I'm bringing all the gear to you, so I'll bring the Profoto lights, all the transmitters. All you need to do is bring your camera and three favorite lenses, and I'll do the rest. All right, so let's size these down. There's a faster way to do this, but I'll just do it so you can see all the images. This should be pretty fun. And since I shot this on a tripod, it should be pretty easy to make our adjustments and make this work. <clears throat> All right, so first image, we're gonna take the main image, drop it on top. We're gonna hold down Shift, Control, Command, and just drag it. And all I should have to do here is just erase 100%. Boom, check that out. We'll get the fall off light as well. Take this stand out of the shot. And that is a really good start. So now we have our main image. Let's take this, close it down so we don't get confused. We'll flatten this image so we don't get confused. You know, one thing we forgot is the reflection. So let's go back a step. That cool reflection right there, E for erase. Hundred percent. Get it right there, and we can fix that a little bit later. But that's a good start. Now we're going to flatten. We're going to take this image, Shift Function Command, drag on top. And since it's on a tripod, it should be perfect. Close this one down so we don't get confused, and just keep doing the same thing. So I call this technique painting with light. It's nothing original or new, but it's really fun if you have a scene like this, you want to light certain elements, you can do so by performing this process. <clears throat> Excuse me, I have allergies today. All right, E for a race. We're looking for this guy, 100%. Booyah! How cool is that? Get that fall off light as well. Nice and pretty. Now, be careful you don't go into the other one because that's what happens. So just get the little element that you're looking for. And then also the reflection. Check that out. Right there. Was that fun? I think so. We're gonna flatten that so we don't confuse ourselves. If you've ever seen me live with Photoshop, you'll know that in my 17 year career of doing Photoshop, I don't use layer mask. And I do it for one reason. I perfect it the first time so I don't have the option of going back a second time or a third time or a hundredth time to correct certain things. All right, next one, drag it over here. We're gonna close this down, size this up. Now we're looking for this guy right here, E for erase, zero for 100%, boom. Isn't that fun? Now you can see the lighting is just the strobe on a snoot with a snoot to shape it and put it right on the portrait. I like the little light vignette it puts around it and the shadow fall off. And let's see if we can get our reflection. We can't, but we're gonna do it anyway so I know where it goes, so I can place it correctly. Flatten that. Take this file, drop it on top. Boom, close that down so we don't get confused. <clears throat> e for erase, 100%. Boom. Tell me this isn't fun. Hope you guys will try this pretty soon. Get a little bit of that light around the edge. Loving this. Looks so pretty. And let's get the reflection in the glass. Beautiful. Close this down. That's looking pretty good. And this is all pretty much straight from the camera stuff. There's not a lot of trickery. All right, here's the most important part. Taking this file, dropping it on top, and now we're gonna correct everything that's wrong that shouldn't be there. Like this strobe, I should've taken out. I don't know why I left it in there. It's probably just too much wine. But we can take that, 
Boom, check that out. La strobe is gone. I love that. And the shadow right here of the fall off light, we can correct all that. Isn't that awesome? Totally painting with light. And the fall off right here. Beautiful. Right there as well. Since we shot this on a tripod, this is super easy to do. And I don't usually shoot with a tripod, but when I'm doing work like this, I always make sure to do a tripod because it saves me hours and hours of work. Well, you see that tripod right there? Let's go back a step and zoom in so you can see this. That's the shadow of another tripod. So we gotta take that out. E for erase. Boom. Boom, 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 boom. Let's fix that line right there while we can. Super easy. I love doing this. And then let's work on this little strobe right here. Take as much out as possible without affecting the portrait too much. Round it off. Perfection. Loving that. I'll fix this a little later. And then we got some people back here taking pictures. Boom, gone. We got another one back there, but we'll fix that later. No big deal. Let's check our reflections. But look how crisp they are. I shot this at 50 ISO because I'm using strobes, I can do so. I want to have as much pixels as possible to work with. Looks like we've got a reflection of a B10 right there. Take that out. Again, we'll fix me later. Looks super, super good. I'm loving this so far. All right, what else? Let's turn this off. Okay, see we have some cast on the floor we can take out. E for erase while we have this layer open. So again, if you're not using layer mask, it trains you and forces you to look at every single detail as you're going because you're not gonna have an option to go back later and fix this. Let's check out the ceiling. The ceiling's pretty good. We can we have that last file to work with. Oh, we got some shadows over here. Boom, gone. Boom, gone. Maybe right here we have a little fall off. Boom. That beautiful paneling. We want to be preserved and perfect it. Make that a little darker right there. Loving that. It looks so good. What do you guys think so far? Something right here, right there, and right there. All right, I'm digging it. All right. So check our work one more time. Just go back and forth and just look at it. Looks like we've got a little some lines over here. All right, we're gonna flatten that. Now I've learned a good valuable lesson here. When you get to this point, save your file. And save it as a TIFF. I have a touched up folder here somewhere. Drag it all the way down. Or better yet, save it as a PSD. So touched up, Photoshop document, save. Since we've done a little bit of work here. But what do you guys think so far? Does it look nice? Yes, JB. Good. Glad you're enjoying this. All right, so let's close this one down so we don't get confused. Don't save. Now what do we have? We've got this window right here, which I'm not sure if I even want to use this, but we're gonna try it. <clears throat> and then close this one down since we've already saved it. So let's erase it 50% this time and see if, you, see if we even want to do this. It's a little off, so we're gonna to do 100%. And I think it's a little distracting. So I'm actually gonna skip this step because I can go in later and actually make two layers, make this a little lighter and a little more blue, and it's all lined up and perfect. So sometimes you shape too much with light, you don't need to. So flatten that. So we're gonna close that file and that file, but I think I do wanna use this. So next we've got the light here. Take this file, drop it on top. E for erase. 
100 percent this goes all the way up there we don't want the strobe so let's stop right there yeah i kind of like this that's really pretty kind of looks like the candles are lighting all this up and not the strobe and i missed a little bit right there but we can fix that later Close this one down so we don't get confused. The next one is going to be right here. E for erase, zero for 100%. Take this little guy to make it match. Oh, I love it. Loving it, loving it, loving it. Isn't that beautiful? Okay, really digging that right there. Flatten it, erase this one so we don't get confused. Last one is for the ceiling, and this is going to make a huge difference in this image because I know the actual color. We want this vibrant blue to come out just a bit. E for erase. Look at that blue. Now let's say it's a little distracting and too much. Let's get over here too. I got a little trick for you, not to worry. Oh, I love that. So here's my trick. If you think it's too bright, we're going to click on the bottom layer. Command U for hue and saturation. We can darken it. We can move the saturation around. We can change the color completely if you want with hue and saturation on that bottom layer. Just a little bonus trick that I love doing. So here's before, here's after. I think a little darker looks really good for this. So we'll stick it right there. Loving it. All right, we'll flatten that. And voila, that is the Photoshop portion of this. The rest of the work I would do is take all this junk out. I would take this little corner, flip it, stick it over here, uh, crop it in just a bit, take the couch out, take this out, take this little line out. I can just take this material over here, flip it. Same thing with what we missed in the corner, or you can just leave it there. But that is a really good start from what we had in the beginning, which was this. And now we have oh, I don't know where it went. Now we have this. Boom to boom. Boom to boom to boom. What do you guys think? You like it? All right, so I'll post this on my Facebook at JB Salee on Facebook. It's JB space S-A-L-L-E-E -E if you'd like to follow me there. And I can show you more of my trickery in Photoshop and my lighting on set. Hope you guys enjoyed. Take care.